These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together, they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers attempt to beat possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. Their quiz pedigree is well known as they've won some of the country's toughest quiz shows. They are the Eggheads. And taking on our awesome quiz champions today are the crazy golfers. The majority of this team all work for the same company and one of the regular team building exercises that their boss insists on is golf lessons. Let's meet them. Hi, my name's Leanne, I'm 26 and I'm a sales administrator. Hi, I'm Bradley, I'm 27 and I'm a financial controller. Hi, I'm Hannah, I'm 23 and I'm a sales administrator. Hi, I'm Rob, I'm 36 and I'm a sales engineer. Hi, I'm Patrick, I'm 41 and I'm a sales manager. So Leanne and team, warm welcome to you. Thank you. So the golf lessons you all do together, do you? We do. We started out with golf lessons because none of us had ever played golf before. So it was sort of a team building exercise. And the boss isn't here to explain himself, but he take, does he take you out on a working day or do you have to sometimes, go at the weekend? Yeah, he's, he's really quite generous sometimes and just let us go. <laughs> Very <yeah>. generous. <laughs> has, it, has it worked? Have you become a better team because of your golfing? We can hit the balls now. I think it's worse, actually. <laughs> 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 it's been a steady downhill uh, spiral, really. So. But if you win today, I'm thinking we've got to thank the boss for, for building you up as a team. Absolutely, Definitely. yeah. We will, we will treat him to the best set of golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Every day there's a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, crazy golfers, the eggheads have won the last 20 games which means £21,000 says you can't beat them today. Does that make it more exciting? Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of history. Which one of you would like this? I'll take it. Patrick. It's going to be Patrick. I think it's Patrick, yeah. Patrick. Okay. Patrick. Who are we yeah. taking on? Patrick, do you want to pick an egghead, Patrick? Uh, who do you think, Patrick? Patrick. Let's play Daphne. Daphne. Go on, then. Daphne? Daphne. Yeah, yeah, play Daphne. 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 Okay. Patrick from the Crazy Golfers against Daphne. Oh. There she is, from the Eggheads. To ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in the question room? So, Patrick, what exactly does your business do? Uh, we manufacture and uh, supply electrical testing, test and measurement equipment for commercial and industrial uh, use, really. OK. Uh, is there a lot of discussion of history in the office, Patrick? Um, yeah, there is when Rob's around. He's a bit of an old timer, really, and and, Niger, <laughs> and, the, and the boss as well. So uh, they like to reminisce. And uh, Daphne, uh, Lady CJ always teases you about this round that you witness most history firsthand. <laughs> well, I was born before the Second World War. There's an awful lot there. Yes. Okay. Good luck. Three multiple choice questions on history in turn, and Patrick, you can choose the first or the second set of questions. I have the first, please, Jeremy. All the best, Patrick. Good luck. During World War II, who famously said, it makes me feel I can look the East End in the face after Buckingham Palace was bombed? Was it Queen Elizabeth, Princess Margaret, or King George VI? I'm thinking Queen Elizabeth, but obviously at the time she, she wasn't queen. Uh, Princess Margaret, maybe, George VI. I'm thinking more between King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. Not quite sure. I'm going to take a little bit of a guess at it and say Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth is right. Well done. Not our current Queen. Queen Mother. The Queen Mother is, oh. is who it was, but it doesn't matter. You got it right. Fair enough. Here's your question, Daphne. In 1612, Pendle Hill in Lancashire became notorious for what? Anti-government riots, floods or witches? They were the famous witches of Pendle. The witches of Pendle, they were indeed, Daphne. Back to you, Patrick. The members and supporters of the 1871 Paris Commune were known by what name? Communettes, Communique or Communards? I really don't know the answer to this question. Um, it's a crazy, crazy guess. I'm just thinking that the, uh, the old pop group, the Communards, got the name from somewhere. So I'm going to guess on the Communards. Great work. You've got it right, Patrick. Communards is right. Daphne, Charles I was executed outside which London building? 
Was it Whitehall Palace, the Tower of London, or Westminster Abbey? It was Whitehall Palace. It was indeed Whitehall Palace. They know a lot, don't they, these <laughs> eggs? <laughs> Patrick, your question. Which of Charles II's courtiers served as a model for Britannia on coinage? Was it Barbara Villiers, Francis Stewart, or Winifred Wells? Now, this is a total guess. I have no idea, so I, I can't even put anything. I'm going to guess totally at Barbara Villiers. It's not Barbara Villiers. Any egghead know? Francis Stewart. Stewart. You all know. Francis Stewart is the correct answer. Here's your question, Daphne. If you get this right, you're in the final. What name was given to the ancient rite by which people could let their pigs feed on common land of the forest? Was it Estover, Panage, or Turbury? I think Estover was collecting woods, wood from the forest, and Turbury was collecting turf, and it's Panage. Panage is the right answer, Daphne. Well played on history. Sorry, Patrick, she's knocked you out. But she's pretty good. Very. I must say. <laughs> Daphne, you're in the final. Well done. Patrick, sorry, you're not. Do both of you please come back and rejoin your teams. So, as it stands, the challengers have lost one brain from the final round, and the eggheads have lost no brain so far. The next subject is arts and books. Who would you like to choose for this one? I can't do this one. I haven't I like I've no chance at me, really. I'll, I'll, I'll do this one. I'll take it. OK. <laughs> Very brave, <laughs> Hannah. Well done. <laughs> Straight on it. OK. Against who? I'll say CG. 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 I'll take on CJ. OK. Hannah from the Crazy Golfers against CJ on Arts and Books, eh? Yes. What about that? It's one of my middling subjects. <laughs> See how you both do. Do go to the question rooms now. You've been reading some biographies recently, Hannah, I gather. Um, the two most recent ones are Alan Carr's and Chris Evans' first book. I still need to go out and buy the second one. And they're good books, are they? Brilliant. Really, really good reads. Couldn't put them down. So, are there books, because we're in arts and books now, um, do you enjoy fiction or, or what? I prefer more real-life things. Um, I read the odd fiction, but I do tend to stick more to real-life biographies. CJ, I don't know if you've had a biography written about you yet, CJ, so I presume there's not much point reading. Only a couple of unofficial ones online. <laughs> All right, I'll ask each of you three questions on arts and books. In turn, whoever answers the most questions correctly is the winner and obviously goes through to the final. Hannah, would you like the first or the second set of questions? I'll take the first, please. Here we go, all the best. In Shakespeare's play, The Merry Wives of Windsor, Sir John Falstaff tries to woo two married ladies, Mistress Page and which other? Is it Mistress Ford, Mistress Field, or Mistress Frilly? It's not one of the Shakespeare's that I have read, so it's going to have to be a complete guess. And I shall go with Mistress Ford. Mistress Ford is the right answer. <gasps> <laughs> well done, Hannah. <laughs> Good start. CJ, the novels The Body in the Library and At Bertram's Hotel feature which character? Miss Marple, Kay Scarpetta or Nancy Drew? I don't recognise At Bertram's Hotel, but I think The Body in the Library is Miss Marple. Yeah, they're both Agatha Christie's. Miss Marple is correct. Well done. OK, Hannah, your question. Which best-selling 1998 motivational book was written by Spencer Johnson? Was it the four-hour work week, how to live on 24 hours a day, or who moved my cheese? Again, it's, it's not one that I've heard of. Um, so again, it's going to be a guess. When we are doing the quizzes on the, on the quiz machines in the pubs, it's when in doubt, take the middle one. So I'll go for how to live on 24 hours a day. Judith has pioneered a technique known as the Keppel technique, which involves her going down the right and in this case, that would have been the way to go. It's Who Moved My Cheese. It's almost an old fable, that. Have you read it, Kevin? No, well, I, was only, it was, I knew it had been around for some time. You still see it quite prominently in bookshops. It's a self-help it? book. It's, mm. it's, it's brilliant. It's mm. about mice in labyrinth have cheese. One day, the cheese disappears. One mouse just slumps down and gives up. The other mouse starts running, and he finds more cheese. And the point is, it's the classic human response of, you know, when your cheese is taken, do you just do you just give up, or do you actually go out and look for more cheese? So glass half empty, glass half full. Yeah, exactly so. Mm. You don't have to read it now. 
Yeah. Have I given away the ending? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. CJ, you don't need self-help books, CJ, do you? I need help, but not self-help. Here is your next question. Which poet's letters to his lover, Monica Jones, who died in 2001, were published in 2010? Philip Larkin, Tom Gunn, or Laurie Lee? Hmm. Haven't heard this. I'm not sure about Philip Larkin. Um, I mean, obviously, when they died is irrelevant as to when the, the lady died. Um, well, I know something about Philip Larkin, I know something about Laurie Lee, and that name doesn't ring a bell. I know absolutely nothing about Tom Gunn, so perhaps that's the one. I'll try Tom Gunn. No, it's not Tom Gunn. It was actually the great Philip Larkin. Oh, wow. OK, so you're equal. Hannah, you're doing well. You're holding him off. Get this one right. Put him under pressure. Let's do it. In 1910, the artist L.S. Lowry began work in which occupation? Was he a hospital porter, a rent collector or schools inspector? In 1910, the artist L.S. Lowry began work in which occupation? Oh, obviously know him as an artist, but not a clue as to what he, he did before, um, what job he went into. Um, I'll take a stab at hospital porter. Let's see if the eggheads know. Rent, 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 rent collector. Rent collector, he was. Never mind. You're not out yet, Hannah. He still has to get this one right. CJ, in Hilaire Belloc's Cautionary Tales for Children, what is the name of the girl who told such dreadful lies it made one gasp and stretch one's eyes? Was she Penelope, Caroline, or Matilda? <clears throat> I think I read these when I was very young. And I cannot remember for the life of me. I mean, obviously, there's the Roald Dahl Matilda, but that's not to say it couldn't be that. I mean, I... There's one that is niggling at me, but I've absolutely no reason to know why it's niggling at me. It could be an entirely false memory, but I'm going to go for Penelope. Penelope's wrong, CJ, actually. It's uh, Matilda. It is Matilda. Mm. So well done, Hannah. You've taken him to sudden death. Oh. Gets a bit harder. I don't give you options now. You have to give me an answer. See if you can knock this egghead out. Here's your first question, Hannah. Who created the 2006 artwork, I Am Become Death, Shatterer of Worlds, which was made from butterfly wings? I really don't know. I, I can't give an answer on that one, I'm afraid. I'll have to pass. CJ, do you know? I guess at Hurst. Damien Hurst is the answer. CJ, this is your question now for the round. He was an old man who fished alone in a skiff in the Gulf Stream, and he had gone 84 days now without taking a fish. Are the opening lines to which 20th century work? The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. You're quite right. The Old Man and the Sea is the answer I was looking for. Characteristically, no commas or semicolons <laughs> or anything in that. I don't even know if that was the end of the sentence. CJ, you've taken the round. Hannah, sorry, he got you there. And you won't be in the final round. Please, both of you, come back here and rejoin your teams. It seems as if they've been together forever. Nobody admires.